What? Red Dot and the most lethal band in the world. And now, the first lady of pitch and putt, a force to be reckoned with at any church social, able to leap tall buildings in a single bound and still look good in casual wear, Molly Dodd! Hello out there, thanks for bringing us into your home. Wow! What a crowd. Give yourselves a hand. Yeah. Right. Oh, pathetic, narcissist. Now, as for you, grazing from channel to channel, why not stick around? Our fields are fallow. That's right, folks. Our fields are fallow. Fallow. <laughs> Hey, have we got a special surprise for you tonight. <laughs> That's right, Angst Cam, what the world has been waiting for. And remember, our fields are fallow. Yeah. Okay, please don't try this at home. It could be habit-forming. Remember always, I am a professional. Okay, let's go straight to the top three list tonight. Tonight's top three. Three reasons why the days and nights of Molly Dodd is on cable. Reason number three. The show refuses to pander to its audience with easy parodies of other TV shows. Reason number two. The writers wanted to do more tasteful and upscale material. Aha! And the number one reason the days and nights of Molly Dodd is on cable is... That's right. That's it. The three reasons why Molly Dodd is on cable. Now, don't you dare go away. Just hang up on somebody? You. Come on in. Why were you calling me? I was going to suggest we do this another time, but as long as you're here. Are you sick? You'll look ghastly. Sit down. Did you start breakfast? Oh, actually, I was just throwing mine away. <laughs> uh, yours is on the counter. I brought bagels, just in case. My mind's been racing ever since you said you needed to talk. Oh, I don't think I feel like talking anymore. We'll just sit in silence. I don't mind. The whole way over, I was trying to figure out what on earth could be wrong with Molly. I mean, everything that could go wrong already has. Divorced, alone, tottering into middle age without a sign of a husband, let alone a grandchild. I wouldn't be so sure, Mom. The divorce is still solid, I hope. Like a rock, there's no need for you to worry about the divorce falling apart. Don't tell me. 
You're getting married. Uh, not a chance. Which leaves the other issue. Should I be sitting down? I'm having a baby. This couch is so uncomfortable. Did you ever think to actually sit on this couch before you bought it? I went to the doctor, everything checked out fine, no problem, so there's really a lot to be happy about. Oh, I... Well, that wasn't so hard. No, I think I actually feel well enough to go out now. Nate invited me to a police awards banquet tonight, so I've got to go out and buy a new dress. Speaking of dresses, I guess you better move quickly so that a wedding gown will still fit. Mother... Of course. You said you weren't getting married. Yes, I'm not. The detective is afflicted with cold feet. The detective doesn't know yet. And to tell you the truth, it might not be the detective. Well, these are the words any mother just dreams of hearing. Mom, I'm not doing this lightly, believe me. I've thought it all through, and... I think if we want to avoid a lot of pain and acrimony, you should just accept that, almost as if I were an adult. Bravo, Molly. Bravo? You made your decision, and you're going to stick with it. And you think that's good? I think the only people who understand what you're going through are women who have been in that situation. You're not saying that you've been in this situation? Someone I was once very close to. Actually, my closest friend in the whole world. She became infatuated with this very dangerous man. He was about the wildest, ruggedest guy you could imagine. And then, when my friend got into trouble, there was no one to turn to. And so who was this guy? A gangster or something? Actually, he worked at the Coney Island branch of the New York Public Library. He was a librarian? A damn good one. But a girl in every stack. So my friend felt she didn't have a choice. We found someone who could take care of the situation, and then it was over. Well, I really must be on my way, as long as you're okay. Mother, are you all right? I'm fine. You know, you could move in with Arthur and me. We'll raise the child away from all this squalor. Uh, Mother, all this squalor just happens to be my life. I'm not going to walk away from it. I just have to figure out how I'm going to deal with it. So, you haven't told the alleged perpetrators? Not yet. Uh, the trouble with Moss is, I don't know where he is. And the trouble with Nate is, I do know where he is. Well, whatever you decide to do, I'll be here for you, Molly. I've already decided. Then here I am. Moss? Oh. Hi, Molly. Hello. Oh, what a surprise finding you here. Well, this is actually a pretty popular section these days. No, I mean working here in the store. Hmm. You do work here. Uh, nine to seven. Some weekends. Major medical, uh, three weeks vacation, and five personal days. Well, congratulations. What happened to your bookstore? We got into a, a cash flow situation. Uh, the accountants told my father that uh, he needed to make the bookstore more, uh, more uh, liquid. Ah, well, it's certainly more liquid. Margaritas were flowing. I went over there the other day. Well, I went by the other night. Uh, I got a seat at the very end of the bar where the romantic poets section used to be. Uh, I was sitting on a stool just about level with Keats, I think. I was looking for an epiphany. I had one, but I couldn't quite remember what it was uh, the next morning. Why did you go by the bookstore? Oh, I need to talk to you. Fine. Fine. 
Fine. Uh, uh, let's go away for a weekend. On a hike. In the Shawangunks. Moss, we don't need to go hiking in the Shawangunks. I mean, we could talk here. Although it is kind of crowded. Well, uh, classics is usually deserted. Do you want to go there? Fine. I don't know. We have a problem. Oh? I just took my break. Oh. No, but I've got a break in, in, in two hours. If you don't mind waiting. I don't think so. I, anyway, my mom's waiting for me up front. Well, I could quit my job. That seems extreme, Moss. How is dinner for you? That I would like very much. Uh, ah, well, uh, no, let me say one thing right up front. You shouldn't look so happy. I mean, just because I've asked you to dinner doesn't mean that I want to see you. I just have one thing that I uh, have to tell you. Well, I don't care if you don't want to see me, just as long as we're together. Uh, <sighs> would tonight be soon enough? Oh, no, I have plans. Uh, why don't you call me? Because... I don't really know how to get a hold of you. I, I pass. I'll, I'll return this for you. Moss Goodman, please report to the occult. See, now, that's not fair. What? You, looking that good. I mean, can't you have a missing button or scuffed shoes or have something stuck between your teeth? I mean, really, is that too much to ask? Sorry. But, hey, a lot of people are going to be looking at me tonight. I mean, that's what comes with being a hero. And you're going to be right there next to me. See, that's what I was afraid of. You wouldn't believe how good this dress looked in the store. I think you're terrific, Molly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what about the dress? I think the dress is terrific, too. In its own unique way. See, I knew I shouldn't have gone shopping with my mother. She took me to one of those places where you have to buzz you in. Hey, forget it. I'm gonna feel like the luckiest guy in the world walking in there tonight. I mean, how did I get so lucky? I got a great girlfriend, a great job. Great tux. Actually, you don't know everything you've got. Are you saying that I don't appreciate you enough? No, I'm just saying that if we've got to go to this thing, we might as well get started. You think maybe you want to contain your enthusiasm about this thing? Sorry, I'm... I mean, we don't even have to go. But I thought this was a big deal for you. Hey, nothing special. Just a chance to get the kind of public recognition that's practically non-existent in my profession. An opportunity of unprecedented professional advancement. But hey, we could just skip it. No big deal. Look, I'm sorry. Okay? Molly, are you all right? Mm. Me? Why do you ask? Oh, <laughs> you're acting... Uh, I don't know. Pregnant? <sighs> Shall we? What did you just say? I said, shall we? No, before, in the kitchen. I could have sworn I heard you say pregnant, as in, I'm pregnant. Really? <sighs> oh. Well, I guess I heard wrong. Well, I mean, do you really think that if that happened to be true, I just blurted out like that from another room? I mean, it says a lot about the kind of person that you must think I am. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It was just the crashing dishes I mean, and... you don't think that I have the courage to tell you face to face. Tell me what? What you thought I said. That I'm, you know, pregnant. Well, how could you tell me that when it isn't true? I couldn't. I, you were the one that brought it up. Except, as it turns out, in this particular case, it just happens to be true. What happens to be true? What you thought I said, even though I didn't say it? Whoa, whoa. Now, are you saying that you are? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I can't believe this. Oh. <laughs> We're gonna have a baby. I'm going to be the father of your child. 
Let's not jump to any conclusions. Hey, now, you, you gotta decide. I, I mean, I don't know what it is you're trying to say. What I'm trying to say is that, yes, I am pregnant, and no, I'm not actually 100% sure that you are the true and actual father. So, now, uh, why don't we just, uh, please get going, please. What you're saying is, is that there may be another true, actual father. Might. Just a very little teeny-weeny might. This is either the best day of my life or the worst. <laughs> I don't know whether to crack open a bottle of champagne or jump out the window. Well, why don't we take the elevator? It's just as fast. You're not actually planning to go, are you? Well, yeah, we have to. I mean, this is your night. This might be my night, but I mean, we don't really know for sure whether it is my night, do we? Nate, look, I'm sorry. I didn't know how to tell you. I started writing you the stupidest letter in the history of chickening out, but I, now that I have told you, sort of, um, I think we should go. Let's just stay here, okay? I want to be with you, Molly. I don't, I don't care about any stupid awards banquet. We'll send out for pizza and watch Spencer for hire and just be together. Great. So what was this award for, anyway? Bravery. No kidding. Are you going to tell me what you did? I broke up a robbery. Apprehended the suspects without endangering civilian bystanders. Rescued a hostage from a potentially life-threatening situation. But hey, it's, it's no big deal. They give awards for that? Boy, what a racket. Trying to sneak back to your lair, Miss Dodd? I trust the evening was a success? Oh, everything a girl could want. I got sick in the middle, had to leave early, missed all the important stuff. Good night. Not exactly an incentive to buy into this building. I think I'll take the stairs. Oh, it must be a terrible burden being the only one on the Isle of Manhattan with a problem. Okay, Davey, what is it? There's no need to take the scenic route. Well, since you've backed me into a corner, I have no choice but to confide. It's my son. He's drifted away. Oh, but he disappeared? Somewhere lost in this godforsaken naked city is my own flesh and blood. And I don't have the faintest idea where to look. Well, Davy, I mean, will you tell me if there's anything I can do? I mean, maybe I can ask Nate to look into it. Oh, please, Miss Dodd, no police. No, I prefer to handle this myself. Good night. Good night, Davy. I shouldn't have had those last two Harvey wall bangers. <laughs> Do you want to come in? Oh, right. 
Ron and I were going through all these boxes of stuff, and we were going to get rid of this because we stopped snorkeling because Ron has a sinus thing. And then we thought, Molly's the kind of person who might really be able to use this. Well, ever snorkel? Uh, not recently. Let's see if it even fits before we jump to conclusions, right? There you go. So, do you want it? Uh, well, sure, thanks. <laughs> Listen, can I get you anything? Absolutely. Well, I'm not really sure what I have, but... Oh, this is great. Having a pal next door. We should have a slumber party. Beer okay? Sure. Join me? Um, I can't. Well, I guess you should know I'm going to have a baby. Yeah? Mm-hmm. That's terrific. <laughs> you got any chips or anything? Uh -huh. So, how do you feel about it? About the baby? Of course, the baby. Oh, uh, well, good, basically. <laughs> it's kind of a long story. I got time. Ron's out bowling. You? Uh, well, Nate said he might stop by later. So, we got a little gal talk time. Let's go wild. Hey, before I forget, Ron and I want to have you over for dinner after we finish throwing away our stuff. Oh, well, great. Thanks. That'd be nice. Ron and I can't have kids. We wanted to, but, um... Somebody's got a defect somewhere, so... Mm, I'm sorry. Oh, well, maybe we'll adopt, right? Yeah. So, what's the poop? Oh, now? I can listen and watch Arsenio Hall at the same time. Oh, you know what? Maybe we should wait till the commercial. Fine by me. Hmm. <laughs>